everyone, I'm Alexis Sabolis on the set of Divanity, and I had the chance to sit down with Robin Riker and talk about her role in Divanity and just all of her amazing talent. Is this your first web series? Actually, it is not my first web series, but it may be the first web series that other people see. Um, back in 1999, just when it was all starting, um, a friend of mine, the late Herb Wright, um, produced a series called Mars and Beyond and my husband shot it and we shot all over the country and it was, you know, it was about the first man trip to Mars and it was really a lot of fun. And there was a, then an offshoot of that called the Walker Mars Diaries. And so we were shooting them both simultaneously. And then, um, it, and we still have all of it and some of it aired, you know, sometimes, but then it, uh, it just kind of faded away, but now it's, everything's happening, you know, so this will, many more people will probably see that. Do you feel that the internet is the way of the future for scripted shows? Well, I certainly think it's a way, another way uh, for scripted shows because, uh, and probably uh, ultimately a more interesting way because so many of the scripted shows, especially for the major networks, you know, are so restrictive and, and so, uh, you know, not that I'm for uh, it's swearing and sex and every single thing that ever happens, because that doesn't happen in every single situation, but it, it's so much more restrictive. You know, you, are, you have to sell soap, in essence. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, I think it's certainly a, a very welcome new opportunity for filmmakers and uh, television series and writers and all of us. How do you feel about soaps moving to the internet? I think it's a great idea. Especially once I learned more of the concept of what Divanity is, is, you know, really sort of starting. It's a much more accessible way to get soaps. You can get your fix any time of the day, wherever you are on your computer. And um, I, I think it's a great, it, you know, because they're, they're dying on television. There's not, you know, God knows we don't need more reality TV but, or talk shows. And I know how to cook already, so 4,000 cooking shows is not really what I'm looking for. But it's great to, I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for soaps. I think it's a big opportunity too. Is this very different from daytime? Well, yes, uh, this experience certainly is very different than daytime because it, there's so much more camaraderie here. I mean, this set has been just enormously fun to work on. Everybody's been so welcoming and it, it's very much like theater, you know, where everyone, uh, the producer Kelly and I were talking about that, that it's, you know, it's a much more egalitarian world is theater. You know, every, we, everybody in the theater understands that everybody is important from craft services to the producer, and you usually see more of craft services than you do the producer. So we know that everybody pitches in to make the product, and without the help of everyone, nothing is possible. And so, uh, and that's the, definitely the feeling here. And daytime is much more uh, 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 like regular television. You know, it's go, 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 and there's no rehearsal whatsoever. I mean, you don't you go to what they call rehearsal and you sit down with your ready to take notes. The director tells you with this line cross over here at this line cross over there. You don't actually cross over there. You just write down that when you get there, you will. And then you go away and then you come back and it's shoot. And most of the time somebody's script is stuck behind a cushion on the sofa or, you know, underneath. One time on one show, my husband's a DP and he was watching the show with me at home and the cameras pan, there's an interrogation scene in a, in a police station and they're interrogating the guy, you know, cameras on the guy. And then the camera pans over here and on the floor is a script. And it's on the show, the broadcast show. And you wouldn't see it I mean, you wouldn't know that you could think that maybe something fell out of the police file, but no, it's highlighted to where the actor is supposed to talk. So, you know, it's so fast now. Get it all done. There's no, no, at least in my experience, there hasn't been a lot of really creative, you know, freedom. So this is very different than that. How would you describe Angelica? Oh. Well, I'm just sort of getting to discover her right now, and I like her. I mean, in the, you know, th there's definitely a, you could say that she's a, a, a type, but in this scene, uh, this show, this episode of this show that I just did, um, it was the script and what went down in the script that made me decide to do it because it was interesting. There were levels to her, you know. It wasn't just a soap opera bitch. Um, there was definite you know, different, different layers to find and play with. And, and uh, it was really fun. So she's, I think Angelica 
if I had to describe Angelica, I would say that she was a multifaceted, powerful woman uh, who loves her children, and uh, but won't take any shit. <laughs> what are you working on now? Well, I just got um, a recurring role coming up in next season of Hung. And um, so I'm working out like crazy because I don't know whether I'm a customer or a... Don't know what. And, um, and then I have a couple of independent movies that I'm working on. Uh, one of them is called Divorce Invitation and another one is called Save the Date. And, uh, and then I've just finished, I'm really thrilled about this, I've just finished writing um, a book. Uh, called You Are Here, A Survivor's Guide to Hollywood. So as I say in the book, I'm not telling anyone how to act or how to break into the business. I'm just telling how to sustain yourself, you know, the things I've learned and the things that agents and managers and nobody ever tells you, the things that you encounter in the room and, and uh, just a way to, to keep the dream alive until you decide you don't want it anymore. And even when you decide you don't want to try it, if it's your decision, then you win. You know, and the fact that you've, and anybody who says, oh, you, you were a quitter, no. You know, anybody who says that to you is what I call a soul eater. You know, people who are too afraid to step outside their comfort zone and, and, uh, and they're intimidated actually by the fact that you even tried. So uh, I, I think I'm, that's my baby right now. As a matter of fact, when we're finished here, I'm gonna go home and put the, you know, dot all the final I's and cross all the T's and send it off, so. I'm really delighted about that. So that should be, I think that should be coming out probably around the first of next year.